Hello fellow old schoolers and welcome to some kitchen table magic straight from the headquarters of Olbor Electric Yields, the playgroup I am a member of. This uh, particular match is a best of five. Um, the players here are testing out various uh, tournament brews that they want to bring to the next tournament and um, these are some of the decks that have been uh, uh, yeah, they're considering. Uh, one of them is Jens Ole, we've seen him a lot of this on this channel, and the other is Jesper. So this is Jens Ole on his uh, Lion Attack. Him and I both think that uh, this version of Attack might be the best variant of the Attack art type uh, at the moment. Uh, I'm no Attack expert, but uh, Jens Ole has spent a lot of time playing uh, Smash Attack or Berserk Attack, and also you are uh, Attack. Uh, this one is his version of Lion Attack. Personally, I think uh, a couple of Armageddons could be in there. <laughs> I, I really like them in this art type. Uh, but Jens Ole is testing this out without the Armageddons. I think he has them in his sideboard. So, uh, we have the obligatory four attacks, four black vices, and a couple of inks of Mishra, and then he has access to a couple of Disenchants here. Great against the Abyss and stuff like that. Then we have uh, the four lions, uh, hence the name Lion Attack. And the full red burn package with four chain lightnings four lightning bolts, and we'll see a couple of uh, fireballs later on. Uh, Jens Ole's uh, version is fully powered here with five Moxen and a Black Lotus, and you can sack those uh, uh, Moxen into the attack later on uh, if you want to, just to uh, pump them up when she doesn't need the mana anymore. Then he splashes into all sorts of colors. We have Black Splash for Mind Twist and Demonic Tutor. We have Blue Splash for Power, and uh, also a single Sonic Blast and then we have the uh, even more uh, red with Fireball and uh, Wheel of Fortune. This mana base, we see it here, really, really tight. Um, not a lot of lanes required in this deck. Uh, so we see a couple of scrub lanes, a couple of uh, three volcanic islands, all for Mistress Factories, and a strip mine, and the final uh, four plateaus down here. Now, uh, this deck can use Blood Moons as well. Uh, it's, it, it's not as good with it as like uh, you are a talk is, but um, still um, it can be used because he has so so much red and so many artifacts in it. So uh, he will thrive under Blood Moon a lot more than many opponents. Obviously, a library of Alexandria, and we have three cities of brass here. Um, his opponent is Jesper. We see him here. We just recently got back into the format after having sold most of his cards. Uh, Kind of regretted it and bought a bunch um, just to get back in. Really impressive and a beautiful deck this one. So what is brewed here is like a mixture between um, Aqua Control or uh, Lion Dip and Lion Dip Bolt. And um, so we see the uh, creature base here is three Savannah Lions. Here's the fourth one on its way in the mail. Two Sarah Angels and four Serendipi Freaks. Then he has. Um, a tiny burn package with two sonic blast and two lightning bolts just for additional reach and has put in a wheel of fortune as well from red and then he has also splashed black for the demonic tutor and mind twist and there's a couple of books as well so really a mixture here between um, the more controlish variant but um, with a lot of additional burn and that wheel of fortune just to provide some extra tempo and aggression time will tell if this uh, more jack of all trades um, approach will work or if um, he should have uh, gone for one of the those two art types. Lion Dead Bolt is extremely aggressive, trying to win the game uh, in the first um, uh, opening rounds uh, with a very, I don't know what you call it, pr pretty linear strategy. Uh, just really just applying the pressure and burning out. While uh, Lion Dip is um, more of a controlish variant where you uh, have a lot of counter spells and get your stuff out and uh, protecting that with counter magic. And you'll also see um, a book sometimes there. Um, and then after sideboard, he can go uh, even more into the control route. Um, so a lot less aggressive, a lot less fast, but far more um, controlish. As for his sideboard, well, the addition of red has um, made it possible for him to get in those red blasts. So they're always nice. And he also has a shadow storm against, uh, uh, I guess, uh, the deck and robots um, in conjunction with three divine offerings. We have even more burn here. A couple of Sonic Blasts uh, will round out the package. So he has uh, four Sonic Blasts in the deck. And there's a couple of uh, Circular Protection Red and a couple of Blue Blasts against that. And a couple of Energy Fluxen also against the deck and robots. So pretty diverse sideboard here. Very, very geared towards uh, some of the more common tier one decks in the format. Uh, 
So I don't know what he'll take in against the attack, but likely those Divine Offerings and Red Blast will be a, a given. Especially those Divine Offerings, Circle Protection Red might be nice as well. All right, the combatants are set. Let's get ready to rumble. So we have the attack deck on the left here and Jesper on Acro Control Burn on the right. Attack on the play. City of Brass into a Black Lotus. Nice start here, sacking the Lotus for the Money Tutor. All right, so there's a single Black Mana in his Mana Pool, but he's taking this, the Ancestor Recall. Using the City of Brass to play for that. Nope, <laughs> dropped the Lightning Bolt there. Giving his opponent a bit of intel. <laughs> uh, just, yeah, flinging cards around here. Okay, now I can draw three cards. Nice start from him. He does have a single black mana. So, oh, using that for a black wise on the opening hand. Uh, brutal start out of the uh, blind attack here. Really, uh, Jesper must. He needs to get some cards. Oh, didn't get a card out. So he will just take a bunch of damage from that black wise. Volcanic Iron coming out. There's the Ink of Misery. He has him in a headlock even now, so early. And a Mox. Um, so yeah, this is what the uh, Line Attack can do. It, it can really just lock you down so fast. Now he, he costs him uh, life to... Um, okay, at least he has Disenchant. So he Disenchant with the Black line, the uh, black Wise. It does cost him two life to play that land. And But if he didn't do it, uh, he would take even more damage from the Black Wise. Factory coming down here. And now Chaos or he could choose to Chaos or one of the lanes. I think he should. But he'll wait. Oh, okay, there's a Library of Alexandria. Yeah, and without a Black Wise, you can actually... He does have time uh, to get back into library range. Start riding that library for, for as long as possible. Factory comes uh, attacking in here. Okay, then he tries to destroy the library as a disenchant on the uh, Chaos Orb. In a response, so the Chaos Orb dies before it takes effect. So actually sacrificing uh, two life uh, from the factory just to uh, keep uh, the library going. It remains to be seen uh, what the correct choice was. Here's the black wise, yeah. God damn, now the uh, library is, uh, is locked out of library again. Hmm. Um, library aren't that great uh, against uh, a player that has four black wises. He needs to get rid of, the, of that black wise immediately if he can. And he's almost dead. The factory will also do damage. Time walking here. Yeah, I don't know. There's a bolt. Yeah, and then uh, in the next turn he will die to the black wise. Going down to one point of life from that bolt. So, line attack <laughs> in, a, in a blazing fireworks here. Um, just blitzed um, acro control burn down here in the first round. So these guys will sideboard and will go into round number two. And remember, this is a best of five. So um, the first player that gets three wins will win. Okay, line attack here. Um, looks like he's, he's put in some red blasts. So he, he saw a counter spell and stuff like that. So he knows what he's against here. But mulliganing down to, to uh, six cards here. And there wasn't a single land in his hand. and. Even though he doesn't require a lot of mana with such a low mana curve, zero lanes is <laughs> not a good thing to uh, to keep, obviously. So, Echo Control Burn will be on the play here, and that's obviously better for him because now the Black Wises will be neutered. I actually think even uh, Linotok might have taken his Black Wises out for sideboard here. Library of Alexandria on the draw from Linotok, so we can actually keep back a bit here. Uh, even though he is the guy that wants to finish the game fast, he, he might want to change tactics here and just draw a lot of stuff and just start burning the other guy out with his card advantage from that library. Drawing into seven cards using the library. Factory. Mox Pearl. He needs to be mindful that he doesn't uh, Okay, countering the Mox, really? Okay. He wants to keep him back. I don't want too much speed. It does surprise me a bit though. Now oh, Sonic Blasting. 
Burn, uh, burning the other, burning the the uh, tuck player actually with a sonic blast here. Another factory coming down. Strictly colorless mana uh, for the attack deck. He lacks a colored mana source. Okay, that's a red mana. Now oh, activating factory. Oh yeah, he should have waited uh, until the other guy attacked because now he can actually uh, pump it as in a response, pump itself and then pump it with the other factory and gains full life. A small little trick here is always to wait with your sort of power shares until the other guy has actually tapped his factory. Then he can't pump himself in response. Okay, Lion coming out and then Wheel of Fortune. Oh, Disenchant, Wheel of Fortune and a Sonic Blast and a couple and three, four lanes on the hand of the Line Attack, but this does provide, this does equalize a lot of the card advantage uh, Line Attack has gained from that library because uh, both players will draw a whole new hand and Line Attack has to discard all the extra cards that he has accumulated from that library. So, um, nice turnaround from the uh, Acro Control Burn here. But there's still that library. Now more Mace of Ith. A Sovereign. All right. Hello. Uh, apparently forgot to take a damage from the City of Brass, so he does so here. He needs something to remove that library, and preferably also removing the mace. Getting down a book though. Now on the face of it, that will equalize the library, but look at those cities of brass. He will actually take two points of damage uh, if he taps those to use the book. Really uh, doesn't make the, the book particularly inviting until the uh, acro control burn has gotten out some some more mana sources here. What do we have? Sushi coming out. Must have been a sideboard card. Must have taken that in. We didn't see that in the deck in the deck picture. Sonic Blast. Oh, it takes three points of damage. Sonic Blasting it in uh, against all this instep here. Now it takes four points of damage. Two dam two points of damage from the Sonic Blast and two points of damage from the Cities of Brass. Brutal uh, cost for that Sonic Blast. I think he could have considered to do it in his main phase, but okay. Circle Protection Red. That that will help him a lot actually. As a bolt in response, so while the circle protection is on the stack, it's all a bolt him, so he can't use the circle protection yet. Might as well. I suppose another viable way would be to bolt the lion and then start attacking with that factory. But it's all still has the factory, uh, the library, I mean. So uh, the longer this game takes, even though. Uh, the attack deck tends to run out of steam in the late game. Um, he will draw twice as many cards as the other guy. Now oh, bolting the lion. Now he can attack with the factory. Yep. It's getting really dangerous for uh, for a lion uh, for the acro deck, uh, the control deck. Uh, he draws in the other guy's instep, taking a point of damage. Now getting out of factory and the lion as blockers against the. Uh, that single rampaging uh, factory from Jens Ole. He can't really get in with his creatures though because Jens Ole uh, does have a blocking factory and a maze of it. It's still that library going. At least Jens Ole actually has decent chance in this deck uh, so we can actually remove a circular protection. Okay, um, in the, at his end step uh, Jesper draws with that book. So they do have parity as long as uh, Jesper doesn't uh, uh, play too many cards and uh, has the mana available, they can draw with that book in Jens Ole's end step. So both players having a draw engine here, but it's a bit of a, st of a stalemate, a stare down here. Oh, but there's an angel. The stare down is broken. If only we could get rid of that Mace of Ith though. Still that problem. And this time only a single card being drawn from uh, Jesper because he used all his mana to play that angel. 
but still feeling kind of secure. Ooh, this is certainly be freed. And I was just about to say, feeling kind of secure behind that uh, circular protection red as well. So now the flying army is amassing here. I, at this point, it will start to overrun that Mesa Fifth. But the Centipede Freed will ping Jesper as well, and he's way below the other guy in life. So, and Sonic Blast will still hit him. Circular Protection won't protect against that. Though we know that Jens Ole actually only plays with a single Sonic Blast, uh, kind of odd. Usually they'll play with three or four. But um, he has the white cards instead. A tuck coming down here, but that circular protection will actually be nice against that as well. I wonder what Jesper took in from the sideboard. Uh, we haven't seen anything. Uh, perhaps blue blasts. Oh, another one. Another attack. A couple of attacks here. But still, the circular protection is there. Jesper really needs to protect that circular protection with his uh, with his counter magic. is will Jesper try to, he needs to start attacking with his flying army. Uh, if he doesn't, um, he'll die to his own certainty be freed eventually. Another book coming out, yeah, now attacking with both. And uh, Jens Ole obviously uses the mace on the Sarah Angel. Um, so the certainty be freed is tapped. I will probably see a counter punch from those att attacks pretty soon. Watch this. Yeah, there's a disenchant on the Sol Ring. This is a crucial play. Do we have a counter spell? We do not. Circle Protection has left the building. Okay, so now it's it's an, a much more even playing field here. The attacks will be a huge threat now. All those artifacts, they can munch up. And we'll likely see a big attack here. Yep, here we go, everything coming over. Two attacks and a lion and a factory. Yeah, so what will... Suppose he needs to block both attacks at this point. Oh, okay. Blue blasting. Ah, excellent for him. Blue blasting uh, the, uh, the attack. Uh, now blocking the lion with the Sarah Angel and, and, and using his own lion to block the attack. Uh, it eats a mox to kill um, the lion and then there's a bolt actually, okay. So the factory gets in for two points of damage and then there's a bolt and Jesper has used his blue blast. We saw a couple of red blasts as well, but um, eventually it was just too much. He got overwhelmed by all that burn. Lion attack takes a second game here, two to zero. So will this be a clean sweep, three to zero or will acro control um, to show what he has. We actually see, I think as always, is discussing his sideboard strategy against this particular blue. Remember, this is these are training matches, so they're also um, picking each other's brains on, on what to sideboard here. All right, round number three. We saw he had it's in sort of taking out all his black whites there uh, because he was on the on the draw him, himself and then getting in answers instead. Oh, look at this. Wow. Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> what a start. Just emptying his hand here. He doesn't need all those moxen, but they will be great once the attack hits the table. Okay, sort of plush the line. I think that's the correct play. Um, because um, the line attack will use everything he, he, he can to try to uh, ping the other guy in the beginning and then just burn him out in the late game. Likewise, to take some damage from that. There's a Chaos Orb though. I don't know how many cards Jesper has in hand or if he's below the Blackwise yet. He probably isn't or is he? 
Didn't take any damage here. Okay, he must be below. Getting out of Volcanic Island, passing the turn. Okay, they're just drawing going here. Oh, it's just first turn. Look at all those beautiful cards uh, on Jesper's side as well. He just acquired all those straight into a Swedish legal deck, actually. It cost him a, for a small fortune, I imagine. But he must have been trading a bunch of other stuff for it. Sometimes I see people trading like uh, more modern cards and vintage cards and stuff like that just to get into old school. Uh, if they get bitten by that bug. Okay, a lion here. Okay, factory ready, ready to keep the lion at, at bay. But he, he gotta wait a single turn until he can actually tap that factory to pump itself. Now it has summoning sickness, so probably shouldn't trade, trade with the lion. No, he doesn't. He just takes two points of damage on the gen here, going back down to 20 points of life. This is a lot slower game, and I think that's uh, an advantage for Echo Control Burn here. He wants the game to take a while, uh, slowly accumulating lanes and can get, get some Sarah Angels out. The money tutor out of him here. Okay, just took a, an answer to recall, actually shows it here. I think he could have taken a Mind Twist as well, but I don't know, actually not, I don't know how many cards he and Tool has in hand. Just using it. Yeah. And then second with the factory. Okay. Tries to block with the factory, it gets bolted. And uh, the factory gets bolted and uh, he tries to sonic blast the lion. And the sonic blast gets countered, so the lion gets in for two points of damage here. So, getting a dose of his own medicine, uh, the lion at talk now staring down that feisty little lion, clawing him each turn. Needs to get something out here. Trying to disenchant the Chaos Orb. Okay, so he wants to play something that he could Chaos Orb, so he wants to force him to activate it now. Probably activated on the black wise, I think, because there are a bunch of draw sevens on both sides. I think both both players play with Wheel of Fortune and Time Twister. No, no, okay, he takes the Volcanic Island. Let's see if it hits here. <laughs> Barely makes it work. But when we play Kitchen Table, it actually doesn't matter. Uh, even if we miss, we count it as a hit. Because we want to have... Um, we don't want too many Lock Swings. It's a coming down. And after the time walk here, Tuck punches in, eating all the mocks in here for a huge punch. And there's a chain lightning on Jesper, just uh, drawing a lot of blood here. Hot damn, what a turnaround. Now, he probably needs to keep that, li uh, that lion back uh, to block the attack. At least all the artifacts are gone now. What a brutal punch though. Uh, a 1-2 punch, here comes the attack, lion gets in. Okay. That's fine with that trade. Oh, because there's another line. Okay, <laughs> countering it. Now, he totally doesn't have a lot of mana left uh, after cracking all those Moxen into the attack, letting the attack munch it, but he doesn't need that much land. He just needs to draw a few bolts here. Um, or lions and stuff like that. That's an angel, though. Okay, so it's a race here. Uh, can that angel uh, mow down Jens Ole before he has... Uh, Drawn enough bolts to finish uh, Jesper. Drawing with the book, like he's trying to get some counter magic here. I think he drew into a counter spell actually. Lion coming down. Okay. Okay, another turnaround here. Uh, aggression back on the, the side of Echo Control Burn here. So he only drew a scrub land here. Not really what he needs. He needs a balance or something to equalize the creature state. Drawing another card with the book. Attacking for six. Wow, okay, bringing his hold down to eight. Can he get a bolt? Oh, that's a mox though. Chaos Orb, okay. Now, 
Let's just perhaps an answer for this. Oh, that's a distant jump when he activated. It's likely tried to activate it on the angel just to survive. But it's, uh, Jesper is drawing a lot of answers here. Oh, getting in here in the Sonic Blast, finishing the third match here, equalizing the score two to one. Echo Control Burn takes the third match, and we will continue this best of five then into a fourth match here, uh, and we'll see how um, this one plays out. Let's get ready for round number four. So round number four, and if Atok wins this one, uh, we'll end it here with a, a three to one uh, victory for him. And uh, but if uh, Echo Control Burn wins, we'll go into a fifth round. So yeah, we'll see how this plays out. Atok starting off with a couple of Moxen and a Black Wise here. No lanes, so just the blue and black mana. Not a single lane, but he has a Black Wise, so three points of damage going straight into Echo Control Burn, but he. Uh, he draws and then uh, plays a Tundra into a Savannah line, so he's down to six cards at this point. And no red mana out of the attack deck. He needs uh, a single red mana source to be able to bolt that little lion away, or at least another mana source to cast Sonic Blast. Pretty risky hand to keep without a land, but um, he knows his deck best and uh, it can function just fine, as said, with. Just very little mana usually, but without a red mana, that is very risky here. Okay, yeah, didn't play a land. Factory coming down. Lion comes growling. Two points of damage into a uh, lion attack here. Another black wise coming in. Even more damage uh, because he can't play a card. Now he's down to five cards, though. Seventy per feet coming out. Lion comes in again, swinging. Oh, complete mana starvation uh, for Jens Ole here. That is pretty brutal, man. Going past the turn back to Echo Control, burn. And he can attack for oh, another factory. He can attack for so much now. And another sand to be freed. Okay, so now only pretty soon only a balance will be able to, and a white mana source will be able to save the, the attack deck. Bit of a nun game, this one. But at least we'll go into a, a fifth round, I suppose, unless he can pull a rabbit out of his hat. Mind twist for one here. Okay, that's not really getting an underground C just to add insult to injury. Uh, not worth much in this situation. But he really needs a miracle here, and that mind twist for one wasn't really one of it. Okay, going in for three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven points of damage. That's his game. Even a blue blast in hand to protect one of his creatures and a Sarah Angel. Okay, so yeah, two to two here. What a nail biter. Um, uh, so we're going into match number five. Deciding match this one. This will be whoever wins will wins will win this set. So really quite the uh, comeback for Echo Control Burn here so far. So we should see if uh, Atok can actually finish this or if. Uh, Echo Control Burn snatches a victory uh, from what looked like uh, such a brutal start. Ah, okay. Echo Control Burn, no lands, only two factories, non colored lands here. So he mulligans down to six. Not the best start, but on the other hand, uh, at least he won't be so susceptible to Black Wises. And um, the attack deck is on the play, so those Black Wises will likely come into effect. As he lost the previous match. Well, Candy Island. Yep, there we see a black wise. So only two points of damage for uh, Echo Control Burn because uh, he mulliganed. But a very slow start from him again. He doesn't draw, he doesn't tend to draw his bucks as, as much as in Oh, another black wise though. And there's a bolt. Ah, what a start. A lot of damage here. City of Brass coming down. It will ping uh, Jasper, but at least uh, it can provide any mana he wants. And he needs to get rid of cards from his hand to get out of those two double black wise uh, range there. I think he has done so here. I'm not really sure. Yeah, he mulliganed and he played a Savannah Lion. He's made a land drop, so he should be down to. No, he's down to five. So taking two points of damage here. Okay, coming in with a Lion for the first time. Bit of a revenge poke here. From all that damage uh, out of the attack, but another chain lightning here. Okay, yeah, blue blasting it immediately. 
he needs that. He needs to keep a, a really an eye on his life here. The, the attack deck, it's not unusual for it to be ahead so much in the beginning. Okay, a disenchant on the white marks here. This is uh, the mana as a fast effect to disenchant uh, the red marks. Also, just to uh, yeah, delay the attack and also try to keep cards out of his hand here. Another lion coming down, poking in with the first lion. Now the attack deck has made a bit of a risk here. He's going, he's going for for bolting the other guy out. Another black wise, but the other guy is without uh, is outside of black wise range. But I mean, instead of uh, burning the lions away, he has gone for attacking the dice of um, aqua control burn here. Going for the fast kill and just ignoring those little critters. But lions, they do add up. That's a lot of damage they can they can bring to the table here. Now a sonic blast, sonic blasting. Oh, but a lightning bolt straight <laughs> straight back onto his face. So burning each other out and the lions comes in and another bolt out of, oh man, <laughs> so fast here. Okay, Echo Control Burn took the final match here, clawing back into the game, uh, winning this uh, best of five with a three to two score. And that was uh, the end of the first training match here. We have a few more. Um, I think the next one we will try to follow Echo Control Burn a bit here. Uh, so we'll put him up against uh, the deck. Uh, one of our other players in the playgroup has uh, was going head to head with the with a classical version of the deck against this guy, and then I will try my luck with Skynet against this one. After that, now a quick plug here. Um, I will be commentating on the top eight or top four of the um, four horsemen format and uh, the finals of the that online tournament there, and I will be doing that with Brian uh, Weisman. Uh, some of you guys may know him as the. Uh, most of you guys will know this guy. Um, he is the creator of the deck uh, back in the day. A pretty uh, very well-known uh, person in the old school scene and um, in magic in general. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, him and I uh, will go over these matches. Now it is a format that I don't know a lot about. I haven't played it yet. but um, And I will uh, hopefully fix those videos that they're sending to me. Because at the moment I can't download uh, the matches correctly. Uh, there's something wrong with this. Uh, it could be fun to go over the format together here and uh, yeah, see what, what it's all about. And it will be the first time for me meeting uh, Brian Weissman and all the others again as um, they invited me over as a, I guess, a guest commentator on this particular top 8. So if you want to catch that, uh, be sure to check in this Saturday. Uh, I think we are meeting up at uh, I think it's about 8 uh, in the evening in the Central European time and about 11 in the morning um, uh, on the West Coast in America. And um, if some of you guys want to uh, want to join uh, the next tournament, there's an online tournament uh, in that Four Horsemen playgroup. I'll put down a link in, a, in, a, in the description of this video and you can go to that link and, and um, sign up for that tournament uh, if you feel like it. And if not, you can always uh, catch our um, the top eight uh, and uh, Brian Weisman and myself uh, commentating on that one. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time.